want us to has been a service that brings glory to God. And uh, I am trying as much as possible um, to run with it as the Spirit of God leads. And this is all in preparing and equipping the church so that the church will be at a place of ministering. Um, the people will be at a place of ministering. And when we minister, we minister effectively. Because there was no leader. And uh, leadership is very important. And before God does anything, he prepares leaders. If there is going to be, and all of us here, we are leaders. All of us, whether you, you are uh, um, assigned or not assigned. Praise the name of Jesus. Because it's God who raises leaders. Um, men only confirms. You may not have been confirmed. Um, the agenda that Jesus came to prepare a people. A people who will lead the movement of establishing the kingdom of God on the earth. And we are part of that. So we are leaders in our own right. And more so leaders because we belong to the body of Jesus Christ. The body is one. And the body having so many members, when that body is effective, praise the name of Jesus. So you should not wait to be told you are a leader. You are a leader because by the virtue of being a member in the body of Jesus Christ, there is a role that you are supposed to play. And because of that leadership role, leadership role and that's how people are seen and known, oh, this is a leader here, and that leader is confirmed. Praise the name of Jesus. Leadership is not just an appointment. It's a service and a commitment. So, we have looked at a number of things, and I want to continue just from that's part four of it. Uh, we have gone part one, part two, and part three, and now we are on part four. What is the motivation? What is your motivation in serving? And uh, under that, we started looking at reflection on the characteristics that demonstrate right motivation in serving. Looking at some of the things that make up the right motivation in serving. What, is, what motivates people in serving? We looked at the wrong motivation. Some of the things through the scriptures. Last time, I think when I was recapping, I went back to Cain. And we saw how Cain, was mo his motive was wrong. Though he was serving God, but he. We all know how Cain ended up. And the God indeed protected him. Not that so that Cain may repent and change. Because a curse ha had already been pronounced. If you do well, will you not be accepted? In other words, God, God is interested in us doing well. God has our well-being in his heart. God wants you to excel. God wants you to do better. God wants us to bring out the best. Praise the name of Jesus. That is the desire of God has deposited the best. But that best cannot just come. That best will be demonstrated when we are adhering and doing the right things that God is requiring of us to do. So, praise the name of Jesus. And if we do, we do not do well, we'll be rejected. If we do well, we'll be accepted. If we don't do well, we'll be rejected. Now, in this case, you reject yourself of God for me and you to do well. And that's why in the last day he will say, uh, well done, faithful servant. Come in. Enter into your rest. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we have done well. Because we have done well. But if we don't do well, he has also said, he will say, away from me. Away from me. And so, one of the things I love about God, there is nothing really God has hidden what will happen at the end. 
you, you know exactly, so you have to read widely to know what will come. Isn't it? Uh, when you are, you are studying for exam, if you knew exactly what will come, that's already a leakage, isn't it? You, you, you have already, you have a leakage. That this will be, this is, it will be more. So, uh, e exams allows you to study widely and uh, prepare widely so that whatever comes from, the chances are that you have some kind of leakage. And I think the Bible gives us leakage. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible gives us leakage of what will happen. In, in fact, you don't need to go far to know what will happen at the end. The Bible in itself is so clear. Gives us clearly what will happen at the end of the age. That if you do this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. Don't you think God is so gracious to tell you be in heaven? In fact, for me really, God has already dealt with your situation. Praise the name of Jesus. Situation regarding to eternity. In this life, you have to put a few things together. God has not given you really a clear picture of how from point A you get to point B. But he has just said, follow me. Praise the name of Jesus. Follow me. While we are following God, there are things that are unfolding in our lives. As we follow him, think he has not given us a full picture in the following. But the end picture on that, we will do well. Then we looked at Elisha and Elijah, our relationship. Elisha and Elijah relationship. And we saw that um, Elisha, when he received the first mantle, that is in the first book of Kings 19, um, no second, first Kings really, 19 there. If you um, look at that uh, particular um, session of the, the scripture, the scripture, and uh, you see how Elisha is called, Elisha is called in verse 19 uh, of uh, Second Kings. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, who was plowing his twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelve. He said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Now that is, uh, has to do with the calling, has to do with the calling of Elisha. Immediately the mantle fell on him. Immediately the mantle fell on him. He followed. You see, uh, that was the first encounter. The first encounter. And the many people stop at the first encounter. They don't move to the next encounter. Many people, after they have heard, begin to run with it. And they forget that uh, that is not enough. So, um, that was the first encounter for Elisha, for Elisha, and he did the right thing. He did the right thing. What he did was um, to go back and uh, conclusively, the Bible, if you read, he went back, he took the oxen and everything, and they made sure that there was nothing left behind including bidding farewell to everybody that would that was not the end in itself it was the beginning it was the beginning but then Elisha followed Elijah and served him Elisha out of his needs he poured water he washed his feet he endured the same hardship as Elijah would, because wherever Elijah went, Elisha came with him. And it was through that it, praise the name of Jesus. And that's why when Elisha asked for double anointing, um, Elijah told him, well, you have asked for a very difficult thing, but nevertheless, nevertheless, um, 
if you see me when I'm taken, which was the last lap test. And let me tell you, brethren, the end of the matter is better than the beginning. Praise the name of Jesus. How do you end? How do you end? At, at which you are found at the end is the most important. How do you end? I have seen people who began well. And as Paul would speak to the Galatians and ask, Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Why? Because the Galatians started in the spirit and they were ending in the flesh. And many people begin well. Many people begin well. They will do everything well. But towards the last lap, they miss it. And what is counted is not where they began. Listen to me, child of God. What is counted is where you end, not where you begin. Praise the name of Jesus. Where you begin, we may begin in weakness. But we can't afford to end in weakness. Because we must be encouraging you uh, this morning. That look at Elisha. Elisha is beginning and is walking. But there is one particular test that is remaining. But when you begin to have an overview of the whole thing, if the motive was not right, is if Elisha's motive to minister to Elijah, to come along with Elijah, was not the right motive, he wouldn't have waited. He wouldn't have been patient. Praise the name of Jesus. He wouldn't have been patient. Elisha was patient. He was patient up to Jordan. Praise the name of Jesus. We will look at all those encounters. We look at what does each encounter represent in your Christian journey. Because all of us, we are moving in all those journeys in our Christian lives. Amen. So, what does it mean to move from Bethel to go to Jordan, to go to to go to Jericho and to go to Jericho, to move from victory to victory. Amen. But we must pass each and every test at every level. And that's why I'm saying, where we begin, really, it may not matter, but it, it, it plays into where we go next. But where we go next and end, it's more important, praise the name of Jesus, it is extremely important for your Christian life. So, we saw finally how the mantle fell on him. But what is the bottom line? What is the bottom line? The motive was right. Amen. The motive was right. Remember, Elijah was blessing. Praise God. He was never in a hurry to replace him. So what he did was to patiently wait. To patiently wait. And he waited. And he waited. Second Kings 2, 1 through 12, but 9. I want to just zero in on verse 9. Second Kings 2, verse 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that he and Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And they said, Thou hast, hast a hard thing. Nevertheless, that's from the King James authorized King James. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. When I am taken away from you. What does that mean? What does that mean? It meant he has to watch 24 hours. Because this man could be taken away when you are asleep. Will you see him being taken? No. This man could be taken away when probably you were busy doing something else. That means the last lap, the entire concentration and the focus, the eyes were on him. Because the man is going to be taken away. 
the man is going to be taken away. To watch the movement of Elijah. Elijah goes here. Is it with him? Elijah goes here. Elijah not clear. He wouldn't have done that. He waited. Elisha is a good example. We can learn from between a mentor and a mentee. Amen. Disciples, praise the name of Jesus. It's a good example. Of David served Saul very, very faithfully. And uh, for of leaders. When you look at the way um, 1 Samuel 16. 1 if uh, as Samuel 16 is anointed as king. Now they will say to Samuel, with all oil and gold, I am sending you to Jesse, the, uh, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. David. When David was anointed, where was he? Where was he? Initially, he was treated as a rejected son of committed adultery. Jesse believed that his wife had, was born out of adultery. So, and that's why the brother, maybe you'll be hearing this, maybe you're hearing this for the first time. Yeah, and the thing, let, let him take care of the animals, whether the wild beast will eat him there, that was it. Jesse, um, because of what was that he was going to have an affair with his, um, with his David's mother, that that cannot happen. And thank God, it seemed that those years when people were involved in affairs, they agreed with the Jesus, who is the mother, this one will be the servant. And after that act, David was gotten. And when it was found that David was, they, uh, have had an affair outside the marriage. And that's why when David was born, right from the word go, he was a rejected son. Praise the name of Jesus. That is a story I'm giving you so that you can do a research on it. Every good, but that was not the subject today. That's why I'm not uh, uh, diving into that. Praise the name of Jesus. Remember, when Jesus came to his own, they did what? They rejected him. You, you can see how that sequence comes. That Jesus came to his own. When David was born in his own family, he was rejected by his father. He was rejected by his family. The anointing of David, the anointing, anointing of David as a king vindicated the mother from the accusation that this was an adulterous son. Anointed as king. Then he goes back to do his business king. But guess what? In chapter, the same chapter, uh, David was anointed. The Bible says the Spirit of God left Saul. And uh, a tormenting and a distressing spirit. And the soul servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is all. Um, who are before you to seek out a man with his hands when the distressing king, the king, is troubled by the spirit, the, the evil spirit, and the servant says, We need to look for somebody. Praise the name of Jesus. Was the son of Jesse called David? Now, Saul as a king has got a demon coming on him. When the demon comes on him, the demon spirit, madman at state house. When the spirit, the, the demon spirit manifests. The king just goes crazy. Now they need to look for somebody who can sing, who can to replace him. Praise the name of Jesus. In other words, 
David is being introduced to the palace before time. Are you seeing? After all, I'm the king. He didn't say. Praise the name of Jesus. David would have said, huh, David would have said, well, let him be troubled. But he, the name of Jesus. How many of us today would serve somebody they know is rejected? We are talking about right motive. Right motive. What is driving? And we have seen how your character can be soiled. How your character can be destroyed. By the very people you would have, you would have expected that they should protect your rights. Praise the name of Jesus. We are leaders. Whether you come here as a member, you are a leader. And I want you to see yourself as a leader. Praise the name of the Lord. But guess what? For the time David was serving Saul, Saul attempted to assassinate him many times. And isn't this good? He didn't know that David had been anointed? I don't think. He didn't know. Did he know that this young man that is playing the harp is the man who the spirit of You know, there, there are things that the enemy knows and they will just manifest. Praise the name of Jesus. There is that oh. And it goes on. I, I think he used to come and play and go home. There are sometimes normally seasons. Okay? There is a season. So, I, I want to believe when the season was high, they will bring in David. When they praise the name of Jesus. All along, all along, David has been anointed as king. But sometimes, what happens with people? The same thing I have said, Elisha was patient, lacks. So for that reason, instead of waiting to be announced, the guy has gone crazy. I am the next leader. Because David knew that indeed Saul was anointed. And how do we kill Saul? There are many ways to kill. Jesus said, if you have, you, you can kill Saul in many ways. You can assassinate Saul. Speaking against Saul. And there was a reason to talk about him. He was being tormented by demons. Was that not a reason to talk about him? Yes. The spirit of God had departed from him. Was not that a reason to talk about him? Yes. But what did David do? When I was studying about this, praise the name of Jesus, you have to reflect on your own life journey. You had an opportunity to do something. You didn't do it because of the fear of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. David is recruited in the name of Jesus. David kills Goliath. Amen. And David is honored. But just to come and serve. David honored, no, David honored. So, praise the name of Jesus. It is him who honored him. He would have actually refused. David had options, but never used them for personal ego. Hallelujah. David gain. He was in a better place. Even to accelerate the removal. Gina Rabana Itukusu. Gina Rabana Itukusu. He had an opportunity. 
Amen. Amen. Chapter 24. Join us. Chapter 20. Take note. David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. They killed gods. So he came to the sheepfold by the road where there was a cave. The cave. Amen. Then the man of David said to, to him, this, this is a day do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and the stick really cut off the corner of Saul's robe. You know, and there will be people. I just want to tell you, church, watch people who surround you. People can be bad. People can change. People can you see they are using the script. Don't you see they are using the script? What are they saying? This is that day. Behold, I will deliver you. And you know, every one of us would say, Wow. Go. Amen. It was not the right time. Now it happened afterward that. David had struck. He was disturbed. Sometimes we get to know the secrets of our leaders. And how we judge people harshly. In fact, God himself said to condone what? Sin. I'm not talking about condoning sin. I'm talking about motives. And you know the saying goes. When you find people beating up lessly. <laughs> Teaching him a lesson, you, you need to be careful. You need to be, you, you, wh what are you, you are, hallelujah. So Christians, and I'm talking about Christians, how Christians murder, kill, destroy their own. Where they can't even greet you. Just because they had something happen. Have you have been a victim where colleagues could not greet me? Because my until the person is redeemed. But what do we do? What do we do? We condemn people, we kill them, we alienate them, we and at the end of the day, Paul says, Brethren, when it, one of you is overtaken. What are you? The reason you are quiet is because you condemn people. I'm telling you the truth. He said, correct them in. I've shown you the first in wrong thing. Your heart will do what? Will trouble you. We can crush people and we don't care. Because our motive is not. To build the people. Our motive is not to. Our desire. If you would celebrate when people. Hallelujah. 26. Take time to study your Bible. 26. Chapter 26. Let's look at verse 8. Then Abishai said to David, Go has, God has delivered your enemy into your hands this day. Now therefore, please, let me strike him at once with a spear right, you know. <laughs> Saul is sleeping. Saul is sleeping. Are you seeing? Now, David has a second verse. Verse 9. Verse 9. Let's read together. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? And I have seen people leave churches, they talk against the pastors, they assassinate them, they do what? Tuko pamoja. Kama unatoka kwa huduma, because that man is the anointed anointed. 
are you the one who has the, uh, the, 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 the yardstick? Are you the one who has the yardstick? But David is saying, there are no? Oh, kumbe amjui biblia. The gifts of God are without repentance. Who are quick to condemn? And if somebody asks you, why did you leave? I felt the Lord was calling me as well. Say, oh, they are not called. They don't have the anointing. The Amen? Am I talking to people here? It, you do what? It, it can take years. But so that the word of God may be true, you will reap. For a while you may look as if you are doing good. Everything, but it comes a time you have to reap what you sow.